Hello everybody and welcome back to Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. You might be wondering why I'm adulting. Well, you see I fell asleep and one then then I woke up and it was seven years later. So yeah. Alright, so we are going to be getting a total of four heart pieces in this episode, completing a new heart container. So, yeah, we're going to be bumping up to, let's see, 17 hearts in this episode? Okay, so, step one, we are going to be going into Dompe's grave. Now, you're going to want the hook shot when you're doing this. Well, the long shot, technically. Alright, hello, Dompe. <laughs> Young man, are you fast on your feet? I may not look like it, but I am confident in my speed. Let's have a race. Follow me if you dare. Okay, so now we've got another Dompe race. But unlike the other one, we have to do this one in under a minute. And it can be pretty difficult. You are going to be wanting to do some rolls because they are, yeah, they're technically faster by a little bit. But that the, every second counts when you're racing Dompe, uh, this one. See, I could have just totally lost it there because uh, I ran to the fire. If you see a rupee, go the other way. The rupees are always red herrings in the Dompe fight. Make sure if you see a rupee, just turn away. Okay, uh... So, yeah, I'll probably cut to when I actually succeed in this one because this one, this run's not looking very good. <laughs> Uh, eventually you'll just learn his movements. Alright, but when you come here, what you want to do is pull out your long shot and uh, go to that lantern. And unfortunately I was two seconds behind, so I didn't make it. But that's how you do that. You have to get it at either one minute square or under. If not, he'll just say, The time of the race was 102. You're back, young man. Was the present I gave you fun and useful? And it'll just give you 20 rupees. And you have to go back and do it all over again. You're gonna wanna do rolls and you're gonna wanna do that hook shot at the end. I'm pretty sure it can be done just by running, but it's extremely difficult. If you can, uh, if you can uh, aim the hook shot and get there in time, then it's good. Also, I have found a way to decrease the sensitivity on my controller. Uh, the joystick, so now it will be a little bit easier for me to aim things. See, it's not as quick and ridiculous as it was before. So, hopefully I will be able to actually do this. <laughs> I'll probably just, you know, cut out to the run where I actually succeed. So, yeah. This is one of the two annoying things we'll be doing part pieces in this episode. Oh, the things you do for love. And made it! Yeah, 57 seconds. That wasn't too hard. The time of this race was 57 seconds. Your back, young man, was the present I gave you fun and useful. Yup, and so is this. Hooray! That there is a heart piece. As if you didn't already know that, because that's like the, what, 35th one we've gotten here? I'm going into the wall, huzzah! Okay, so, let's see. The next heart piece we are going to be getting is in Kakariko Village. Yeah. Also, uh, by the time you get to that plate, that, like, spiral staircase where you're supposed to just skip it by long shotting. Uh, you want to have about 50 seconds. So, yeah, that's something I've learned. Anyway, it's just going to long shot on these rooftops because you can do that. And we want to go up and talk to that guy over there. Still give us a heart piece. For free. Huzzah! An easy heart piece. Yay! Hey! Good to see you again. I'll give you this a memento. Yay, another heart piece. And now that we have two, we are halfway done. Uh, so let's go back and have some fun.
back in time, that is. Yeah, the rest of the stuff uh, we need to find is uh, as a child. I think this is like some of the last stuff that we'll do as a child, though. Uh, because Child Link is becoming less and less needed. Pretty much almost all of the game after uh, you open the door is as Adult Link. Uh, but Child Link is still needed at points. And these are some things you can't do uh, until you get some songs uh, from the from Adult Link, like teleport songs, or... Uh, let's see. Teleport songs are like the song of Storms, which is a song you can't get unless you are Adult Link, because you have to learn it from that guy as Adult Link, then go back and do the thing with the windmill. Alright, so what we need to do now is uh, get to the Hyrule Castle. Now, I would cut, but I have actually something I thought of. Okay, do you remember that scene earlier in the game when when we're escaping, or well, not, well, when we get to Hyrule Castle and there's Ganon and Zelda escapes and all that stuff, she throws the Ocarina of Time, and Link just kind of abandons his fairy Ocarina that his friend Zarya gave to him? That kind of makes... A Link seem like a jerk but by abandoning that for the the uh, other ocarina. I think it would have made the scene a lot more powerful if Ganondorf had broken the fairy ocarina, then Link looks at the pieces of it and then he pick and then Zelda like throws a new ocarina or he goes and gets it after that. Or something. Because that would just make Ganondorf seem so much more evil. It would give Link a little bit of character, but not not too much because kind of the point of Link is so he can be a blank slate so you can insert yourself into his shoes. So yeah, I think if Ganondorf broke the fairy ocarina, that would explain why you don't have it anymore and it would it would help it would help to do a little it would help to strengthen this, that scene a little bit more, I think. I mean, we know Ganon is evil. He shoots Link with his hand blast or whatever that was. But it would just make him seem so much more evil if you destroyed the, the parting gift that your best friend from the Kokori Forest gave you. It would just make him, like... And that would make sense, too, because the Ocarina thing, one of the things that can destroy him... Oh, we gotta play the, the Song of Storms here. It would make sense that we would want to destroy the Ocarina. I don't know why Link would pull it out. Uh, maybe he thought he could, like, do something with the song, or maybe he drops it or something. I don't know. But somehow, Ganondorf destroys the ocarina. I'm sure they could have, uh, done that. Alright, uh, so if we come in here, under, behind one of these things, is a gold skull to, uh... So, uh, let's see. I'm gonna go ahead and get out my slingshot with one shot on it. Wow, I <laughs> better not miss. And there's the gold one. Oh boy. Okay, I think we can get some more seeds in these pots over here. Nice rupees. There we go, seeds. Okay, good. I forgot these guys took... Oh, I also just remembered. Probably could have used my boomerang. Oh well, whatever. That is another skull tula. What, number like uh, 78, I think? Let's see. Yep, we got ourselves a C. Alright, so now let's warp over to Lake Hylia. Because we need to get to the Zora's Domain, and we can get there pretty quickly from Lake Hylia. And getting those, and we're going to go and get those last two pieces of heart. Which, the first one is super easy. The second one is super difficult. So, yeah. I don't know. It's just so, it's so annoying. You'll, you'll just, you'll just see when we get there. But the heart piece is just annoying. Annoying and almost unfair like 
Yeah, we'll, we'll we'll get there when we get there. So, uh, let's see. <laughs> I ran out of story. Well, I guess I could try and expand on that a little bit more. But what else is there to say? Uh, Ganondorf would look more evil. Uh, it would strengthen the scene a little bit, in my opinion. And it would explain why the Fairy Ocarina is gone. Because it's assumed that uh, because its spot is replaced with the Ocarina of Time. So it's assumed that Link just kind of left it to rot in the water. It's probably all destroyed and decomposed now because it looked like it was made out of wood. While the Ocarina of Time is probably made out of, like, glass or sacred metal or something. I don't know. I don't know. It's blue. I have no idea what it's supposed to be made out of. And it would kind of, it probably have that little, like, reflective surface uh, skin on it, like the Megaton Hammer does, if it was made out of metal. But I guess not. Um, let's see. Where am I trying to get to? Ah, there we go. Alright. Yes, Navi, I know what I need to do. We're not going to do that yet, because I need to increase my health. I'm doing this for my health. Frogs are looking at you from underwater. Hmm. Alright, so here are the frogs. First thing we want to do is play this Song of Storms. Hey! They jump along with our little notes. That's neat. Wow, that melody's so cool, Ribbon. Singing in the rain. Oh, what a feeling, Ribbit. Please take this as a token of our froggish gratitude, Ribbit. All right, see ya, Ribbit. And we get the third heart piece of this episode. We want our fourth. All right, so now what we want to do is play all of our non-teleporting songs. That that Zelda's Lullaby, Pona song, Saria song, Sun song, Song of Time, and Song of Storm. Which, well, Song of Storms we already did. Okay, so let's start with Zelda's Lullaby. And these frogs will jump along with the song. And when you play the song, one of the frogs will get bigger. Young lad, you play the ocarina well. Mm, that melody is so fine, Ribbit. We all should practice it, Ribbit. Take rupees as a souvenir. If you come up with another nice melody, please drop by and play it. Ribbit, ribbit. And we get rupees, maxing out our wallet. Yeah, if you need a little cash, which I don't know why you would, uh, this is a good place to come because you get 50 rupees per song. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, there are five frogs, one for each note, obviously. And we've got to play five songs to make them bigger. The... Song of Storms is just an extra heart piece. But this is not the annoying part. I mean, while this is annoying, it's not the annoying part of this. Because uh, you have to go through and play all five of these songs, and it's just, eh. Yeah. Alright. I'm not even really caring about the melody song. Let's see, no. Down, right, left. You know, I think I've said that the Song of Storms and Saria Song are both my favorite. I don't know, I'm a little torn, but I think Song of Storms might be a little bit better, in my opinion. I just, I don't know, I like it more. I mean, uh, Saria Song is really, really, really good. But Song of Storms just... Oh, it's so good. And now all five of them are big. Young lad, that you play that ocarina well. Mm, that melody is so fine, Ribbit. We all should practice Ribbit. Take rupees as a souvenir. If you come up with another nice melody, please drop by and play Ribbit, Ribbit. Also, I played all of those just to give you a little brain jump on if you if you didn't want to go back and look them up on your own get your own game if you're playing along. Alright. We pull out our ocarina one more time. 
Look at us, we're all huge frogs. We are the world famous five froggish tenors. Ribbit. Make us jump so we can eat the bugs flying above us, Ribbit. Okay, then ready, set, go. Okay, there's gonna be a butterfly flying over a frog. You have to hit the frog. You have to hit the button to make that frog jump. Uh, the frog on the f on the bottom is the A button. Then, well, the blue, f the dark blue frog is A. The light blue frog is uh, left. The gray frog is up. The red frog is right, and the yellow frog is down. So, basically, the frogs in the back are the directional pads, while the one in the front is A. Okay, so A, left, right, down. Huh. Oh yeah, also, you need to do this at inhuman speed and memorize it. Luckily, oh, also it's random for every game. Luckily, I've already done this on this game, so I know the combination. Which I'm glad I didn't re-randomize. So, let's just do this one. It will be different for your game, you might want to write it down. Which is painstaking and annoying, because you, you do everything you've written down, then you look up, and you don't have time for your brain to get to your finger and press the button uh, to do that. So you just remember it and write it down. So let's do this. A left, right, down. Ah, dang it. It's really quick, too. They gave you like a, an eighth of a second to do it, which is pretty bullshit, but that's why it's annoying. All right, let's go. A left, right, down, left, right, down, A down, A down, right, left, A. Booyah! And it was the same. Good. It, again, it will be random for you, but luckily I already went through this bullshit, and I get to look good on camera. Would you take this token of our gratitude? Ribbit. And we get our fourth heart piece for this episode, bringing us up to 17 heart containers. And we are getting pretty close to the end of the game. I mean, we've got... Well, as far as collectibles are concerned, we've still got about two more temples to go through. Uh, those will be two more heart containers which you get from bosses. Then that's four more heart pieces that... Why am I holding up four fingers? You can't see that. That's four more heart pieces that you, we need to get in the game. And that's about, uh, what, 12, 22 skulltulas? Let's see. Uh, 17. Yeah, 22 it looks like. But we're getting pretty close, so in the next episode, uh, we will check out that well. So, yeah, this episode may have dragged on a little bit, but at least we got all of the collectathon thing that we need to do right now out of the way. And we're almost done with with heart pieces. We still got a little bit to go on Skulltulas. But, uh, in the next episode, we will check out the well. This is me, Thrasho2, saying be cool, save often, and don't do anything I wouldn't.